Don't you guys think this is kind of weird? What do you mean? Everything seems fine. No, I mean, we've been killing the big bads and minions and lieutenants since we were like level one and, and, and now we're level 12. Don't you think he would have tried to do something to stop us by now? Like, where are the assassins? Oh crap, the moron has a point. What are we going to do? Pray that the dungeon master isn't smarter than our barbarian. Oh crap, we're, we're screwed. Welcome to the DM Lair. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since the fifth grade. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can implement at your game table. So this is true of almost all D&D games. The players adventure through the world, fighting monsters, overcoming lesser villains, and foiling the plans of an overarching big bad evil guy. They do this from the time they are level 1 to level 12 or 15 or 20. And then there is a final confrontation with the big bad. This, of course, is the campaign finale. But what if, what if, the big bad wasn't content to just let the heroes run ripshod over all of his minions and lieutenants? What if the big bad didn't sit on his duff while your players took their time leveling from 1 to 20? What if the big bad actually did something to protect his interests? This is the story of such a time. In my Sword Coast Guard campaign, the heroes have been running into the forces of Lord Paxton for quite some time now. They first started meddling in his plans around level 7 or so, and things have been slowly ramping up. Now Lord Paxton's goals are not to watch the world burn around him, and wanton destruction is not a tool he uses lightly. Instead, he aims to bring the surrounding peoples and nations under his rule so he can establish a new empire, New Astoria. So, when a meddling band of adventurers start raiding his lieutenant's compounds, he didn't immediately send a hit squad after them. No, instead he sent his emissaries to speak with them. Sebastian Venetia, a powerful warlock, and Vraskin Delver, an ancient white dragon that Lord Paxton single-handedly defeated in combat. And he sent them not to strike them down or freeze them solid in a block of ice. No, instead he extended to them an offer to join his forces and become lieutenants in his growing empire. You see, unless your big bad is completely oblivious or a complete moron, he's gonna notice when adventurers start killing off his minions and disrupting his plans. So the question is, does he just sit there like a lump and allow him to pick off his followers one by one? Or does he do something about it? Now I am not saying that you should pour out completely overwhelming buckets of monsters on your player's characters and stomp them flat. If you did that, it'd be a pretty short and lame game. However, my suggestion is that you should consider how your big bad would react to the heroes messing with his interests and then roleplay him accordingly. Make sure the response is appropriate, but also fair and something your players have a chance of overcoming. Confronted by a powerful warlock and an ancient white dragon at level 8 or so, you would think that my players would have taken the hint and joined Lord Paxton forces. And wow, that would have made for an incredible story and an incredible twist to the campaign too. But no, they foolishly refused. However, one of my players did tell me later that he was this close to attacking that dragon. Now that would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, a fun quick TPK. And so the heroes continue doing their thing. So Lord Paxton sends an army of orcs, ogres, and giants to attack and lay siege to Gauntlet Hall, a castle the adventurers had previously gained possession of by murdering a sect of goodly aligned Torm worshippers. And how they got away with that is probably the subject of a future video. Anyway, the heroes defeat the army's generals and cause it to disband. Then, they crawl systematically through the various orc strongholds, taking out each of them in turn. Meanwhile, Lord Paxton begins sending squads of monstrous assassins after them, having decided that he suffered the adventurers' shenanigans quite long enough. 
but the adventurers thwart each of them in turn, and finally raid and destroy a hill giant stronghold deep in Lord Paxton's territory. Now, at this point, Lord Paxton can see that with the heroes getting dangerously close to his own compound, it's time to up the ante just a little bit. It's time to end the threat once and for all. Okay, a few Dungeon Master thoughts from behind the screen. Up until this point, my players had been cleaning up encounters that I thought would be challenging, but they actually weren't challenging at all. I attribute this in part to having a great group of players with a good mind for tactics in combat, but I also attribute it to how poorly the challenge rating system in 5th edition is designed. Anyway, I wanted to throw something a little beefier at them to see how they do. Oh, and by the way, if you'd like to join a growing community of new and experienced Dungeon Masters dedicated to helping each other run awesome games, I suggest you check out my Discord server. There's a link down in the description. Also, if you're enjoying the videos and would like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon, and I publish D&D 5th Edition Adventures over on DriveThruRPG. More links down below. The heroes are traveling to Mount Sostin, where a tribe of frost giants loyal to Lord Paxton dwell. And on the way there, the snow suddenly shifts in front of them, and two Remorazes rise up to attack. Now, these are powerful creatures not to be taken lightly. Just one bite from one of them reduces one PC's hit points by half, and then the second likewise lays into another character. My players are beginning to freak out just a little bit at this point. And then I reveal the two invisible Ogre Maggie that are flying overhead, having one of them cast Cone of Cold, something the Remorazes are immune to, down into the combat. My player's characters are hit hard, and some are close to going down. Another Cone of Cold from the second Ogre Maggie nearly seals the deal. What with it just being the first round of combat, a surprise round to be exact, and with many of the characters hurt quite badly, my players are noticeably distraught. It's looking to be a TPK for sure, and a quick one at that. Okay, I, I know that many of you are down in the comments just about now telling me how incredibly overpowered and unfair that combat was. And here's the thing, you're right. I definitely threw too much at them. My goal was a challenging encounter, not a TPK, and I was ramping things up based on their previous performances, cutting through hordes of giants with ease. But I ramped it up just a little bit too much. Now, encounter balance is probably something that's been broken for about as long as D&D has existed. If there is a version of D&D that got it right, I haven't played it. That said, here's the thing. This is something that happens to all Dungeon Masters at one point or another. You either come in too hot with an encounter like I did, or you come in too cold. So the question is, what do you do? Play it by the book or adjust things on the fly? The heroes are scrambling, fighting, and discussing tactics while quaffing healing potions like there's no tomorrow, because there might not be one. And they figure that they need to get the Ogre Maggie down to the ground where they can actually deal damage to them. You see, they are ill-equipped to deal with flying enemies. The wizard casts Dispel Magic on one of the Ogre Maggie, and it drops like a rock to the ground. The fall doesn't wound it a whole lot, but the paladin and barbarian swarming on it does, and they kill it in a couple rounds. But the warlock Sebastian, who coincidentally has the same name and class as Lord Paxton's emissary, Sebastian Venetia, is dropped to zero hit points and swallowed by one of the Remorazes. Not good. So here's how I personally stand on things. A dungeon master doesn't just run the game by punching cold hard numbers and being an impartial, heartless rules arbitrator. Anyone with a copy of the Dungeon Master Guide can do that. A truly awesome Dungeon Master cultivates the game experience for their players, creating something that's fun and exciting. So if a Dungeon Master fails to create a properly challenging encounter before the fight begins, what should they do? Just let things play out as they may and hope for the best? Well, you certainly can, and for some encounters, I do just that. But with experience comes the sense of when it's time to step in and adjust the encounter on the fly as you go. This is not cheating. 
This is part of cultivating the game experience and it is a fine art. In the example of the wizard using dispel magic on the Ogre Maggie, that should have never worked. An Ogre Maggie, now called Ani in 5th edition for some reason, can fly as an innate ability. It's not a spell, so it's not something that dispel magic would work on. However, I could see that the fight was heading toward a TPK because of a mistake that I made as a dungeon master. So I intervened, pushed the rules aside for a moment, and allowed it to work. I don't always do things like this. In fact, I would say that I rarely do them. And I certainly don't make a habit of saving my players bacon. They generally need to earn their victories. But in this case, I made an exception. Now, the second ogre mage, seeing his buddy die so quickly, decides to turn invisible and put some distance between him and the adventurers. This buys the heroes some time and they focus fire on the Remorazes. As the Remorazes begin to go down, the ogre mage decides that today is not a good day to die and retreats to inform Lord Paxton of the sour turn of events. However, the day is not a complete victory. As the heroes pull Sebastian from the gullet of the Remoraz, they find his body lifeless and partially digested. Having no one in the group with a simple revivify spell, or even raise dead for that matter, and being over a week away from the city, the heroes turn to the druid. It's time to test out that reincarnate spell. The spell is cast, Sebastian's soul is summoned forth from the fugue plane, and the heroes welcome back their reincarnated companion, who is now a tortle. <laughs> a tortle of all things. <laughs> I mean, wow. Can I tell you that everyone at the table loved that? Not a game session goes by that we don't make fun of Sebastian the tortle in one way or another. <laughs> anyway, let me know down in the comments where you stand on the issue of playing it by the book or adjusting things on the fly. And click right here to hear about a time my players tricked an ogre and the awesomeness that resulted. And next week, we'll be talking about how to design the perfect boss fight. So until then, let's play D&D.